Okay, uh, good evening. This is uh, Professor David J. De Los Reyes. Okay, I changed my shirt so I look han I look more handsome. Oh, I'm just joking. Okay. <laughs> mm, it's uh, August uh, 22, p um, 2023. The time is around 10:22 p.m. Okay. Uh, my discussion for to for this evening will be alternating current circuit and this is a continuation of my lectures on my subject matter alternating current circuit uh, and this will now be lesson number 28 lesson number 28 is actually an example problem on how to illustrate nodal's theorem so to illustrate a uh, nodal's theorem I will be presenting the same problem that was uh, solved by superposition theorem because uh, superposition theorem and nodals, okay, uh, they try to solve problems uh, with the same nature that is uh, it's a multi-source, okay, and they are connected in parallel. Okay, uh, let's proceed. So my topic for uh, this evening will be alternating current circuit, lesson number 28, and this will now be example problem of nodal theorem. From the last lesson number 27, uh, I discussed the concept of uh, nodal theorem, uh, in which we, we derive the equation on how to compute for the log current, okay? that will be drawn by a load if it is connected from a multi-source okay so for tonight we will be using that derived equation and to prove the validity of our answer I will be presenting same problem that was solved by superposition and let us compare the magnitude of the current if they were actually the same okay if they were the same meaning to say superposition was good no doubt children were good. Ah, we are all good. Okay, ah, let's proceed. The figure will be something like this. Okay. I place it here, open quantity, same as in the superposition example. The given uh, circuit under the superposition was this. Okay. Uh, we are given two voltage sources, E1 and E2. The internal impedance of uh, E1 is uh, Z1. The internal impedance of E2 is E2, and acro a connected across this is a load C sub L. And under nodal theorem, we, we call this a node. Node of junction. That's why when we derive the formula on how to take or compute the current, uh, we use the so called nodal method. This is a node, the other term for a node is junction. Okay, let's try to bring out the specifications. A1 is 440 angle 0, A2 is 440 angle 15, Z1 is 0.25 angle 15, Z2 is 0.35 angle 25 degrees, and CL is 40 ohms angle 20 degree ohms. If you try to notice it, the value Z1 and Z2, these are less than uh, one values. Uh, because they are internal impedances it's just the impedance effect of the voltage sources okay because there is no such thing as a perfect coil right so there should be an inductance for it and whether we like it or not there should be a small resistance and if we try to compact uh, the value of small resistance in a small inductance it is less than uh, one, one ohm value so if you try to notice a value less than 1 ohm, uh, under AC circuit, those should be internal impedances. Okay, the problem is asking, find I sub L using nodal theorem. Uh, the problem is asking what will be the value of the current, okay, drawn from this uh, voltage sources number 1 and number 2. If the value of CL here is uh, 40 ohms angle, 20 degrees. Okay, I, I will now try to bring out the current that was derived from the superposition example. 
The value of the current is actually 11 amperes isobel. It's approximately 11 amperes and the angle is approximately uh, 13.6 degrees. This is actually the value of the current. Okay, 11, uh, 11 amperes. Okay, so at least if we could uh, bring out a value near this value, of course, uh, we could say that nodal solution was also a correct solution. Okay, let's try to bring out the solution. Uh, <coughs> I sub L is actually B sub L over C sub L. The current drawn by this load C sub L will be the voltage across this. Okay, which is B sub L divided by H impedance C sub L. Okay, but uh, we got a problem for the value of B sub L because for multi sources, okay, uh, this is the formula that was derived from <coughs> previous lesson number 27. Okay, if there are two voltage sources, it should be. E1 over C1 plus E2 over C2. The denominator will be 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C sub L. That is for two voltage sources. If there are three, uh, we add one more over here plus we add 1 over C3 over here. But since there are only two, we could use the derived formula from previous lesson number 27. So meaning to say to compute for V sub L, uh, we evaluate E1 over C1, E2 over C2, plus the summation of this, which is 1 over C1, 1 over C2, 1 over Cn. So this is now a direct substitution solution, as long as you know the formula and how to take B sub L, right? So using our knowledge of uh, polar to rectangular and rectangular to plural, plural, okay, the fundamental operations for complex numbers, we could evaluate these values here. So I represented the total value of the numerator to be N, meaning the numerator, and the total value of the denominator to be D. Uh, I am just systematic, okay? Uh, I do not try to substitute immediately this one here. Then try to see, okay? It seems uh, you, you are seeing a crab legs, you know? So for us to be systematic, We'll do this uh, value E1 over C1 and E2 C2 separately. So I place it here. I will try to compute first E1 over C1. E1 over C1. Okay. Uh, these are the values. What comes out is uh, 440 over 0.25 angle 15 degrees. C1 is uh, 0.25 15 degrees. Okay. It will be 1760. We, this goes up, so this should be negative 15. Converting this to rectangular, because later on we will add it with the next value. The rectangular is 1700 minus J455.52. Okay. I am just preparing myself for the vectorial summation. Okay. So after coming out with a polar form, I converted it to rectangular, okay? Uh, that's a systematic solution. For E2 over C2, it will be 40, 40 angle 15 degrees over 0.35 angle 25 degrees. What comes out if we try to take the ratio of the magnitude, it will be 1257.14. 12, 15 minus 25, this will be negative 10 degrees. And again, I am preparing myself for the pictorial addition on the numerator. I will now convert this polar to rectangular. So it will be 1238 minus J to 18.3. Okay. So if we now try to combine the numerator, oh, this, is, this will be the systematic solution. Okay. So you don't clog up the, 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 the fraction over here. It will now be the first part. Right? Plus the second part. Ah, we don't have to place the quantity, but uh, to show that uh, this one is in one group, I, I place the quantity. So combining the real to real, it will be 29.38. Combining the imaginary, negative, negative, so the, the overall sign will be negative, and the magnitude will add up for the real imaginary part, 673.82. And if we now try, this is now rectangular. 
But later on, when I perform the operation division, I need the polar equivalent of this. So I will convert this rectangular to polar immediately. Okay, I am just systematic. I am preparing for the worst. So this will be 3014.3 angle negative 12.97 degrees. So the polar equivalent of this polar is 3014 angle negative 12.917 degrees. I am preparing for the operation division. Okay, that's why after adding this two, I converted it to polar. Okay. Oh, let's try to compute the value of the denominator. The denominator is, uh, the first one is uh, 1 over C1. 1 over C1, so 1 over 0.25 angle 15 degrees. 1 over 0.25 will be 4. We reach this up. Okay. It will become negative 15 degrees. Later on, I will have a vector addition on the denominator. I will now convert this to rectangular. 3.863 minus J1.095. Uh, just be careful with the sign. Okay? If this is a negative angle, the sign of the imaginary part should be negative. Right? Okay? 1 over C2 is 1 over 0.35 angle 25 degrees. Right? 1 over 0.35 will be 2.851. We raise this up. This will be negative 25 degrees. Again, converting to rectangular because later on we will add the denominator. This should be 2.589 minus G1.207. Okay? So I am ready for this one. I am ready for this one. The last part, 1 over CL. 1 over 40 angle 20 degrees. 1 over 40 is 0 0.025. We raise this up. This should be negative 20. Converting this to rectangular, it should be 0 0.234 minus J. Uh, this is uh, less than 45 degrees, so the value of the imaginary part should be a small value. Minus J, 0, 0, 0.855. Okay? So, I am now ready for the rectangular part of 1 over CL. So, for the denominator now, I will now try to uh, take the sum of 1 over C1 plus 1 over C2 plus 1 over C sub L. Okay? And this should be equal to... This is a 1 over C1, this is 1 over C2, this is 1 over C sub L. Okay, uh, we now try to perform the addition, real to real, imaginary to imaginary. Real, this real, this real, take the summation of this three, what comes out is 6.4754. The imaginary part, uh, this is negative, 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 so the overall sign will be negative. Then just take the victory at the sum of the part for the imaginary part. Anyway, they are all negative, so you could take the sum. The total will be 2.25055. Uh, this is the rectangular equivalent. But uh, we will perform later on uh, a division for B sub L. So we will now convert uh, this denominator to polar form, okay? So it's always polar to rectangular, rectangular to polar, plus our knowledge of the derived equation, right? So this should be 6.855 negative 19.16 degrees. Uh, this angle here is less than 45, okay? Because the ratio 2.25 divided by 6.4 is less than 1, okay? And any ratio less than 1, if you press the arc tangent, it should be an angle less than 45 degrees, and this is 19.16 degrees. It should be negative because it is negative. So B sub L now will be this value here. Okay, by using this, we have a, uh, what you call this, uh, computed the value of the numerator in polar, computed the value of the denominator also in polar, separately for us to be systematic. Okay, so substituting by using this formula, it will be 3014 divided by 6.8 with these angles here. 3014 divided by almost 7 is 439.7. The angle should be... Just be careful with the angle because if you made a mistake in the angle, the current should be mis uh, the angle of the current will be wrong. So the angle will be twelve point nine. Uh, what's this? For the current, twelve point nine one seven. Okay, we raise this up. 
plus 19.16 and if you try to notice it 19 is greater than 12 so what comes out is 6.243 degrees so the angle of the voltage the nodal voltage across this is 6.243 degrees okay and by using the first solution B sub L now should be the computed value of B sub L over C sub L. So substituting 439 over 40, angle 20. 439 over 40, 40 is 10.99 and that is almost 11. Right? And the angle should be 6.243 minus 20 is 13.7757. And if we try to run off this one by using uh, just only one decimal, the current uh, computed using nodal curing uh, will be 11 amperes. The angle is negative 13.7 degrees. And if we try to go back with the current, okay, uh, that was uh, bring out or uh, bring out by superposition curing, okay, the current is actually 11.002. The angle is ne negative 13.66. And again, if we try to round out, Okay, the value of I sub L using the superposition theorem, we, we could remove this uh, 0, 0, 2 now. Okay, uh, that's almost 11 amperes. Okay, and if we try to run off this negative 13.66, uh, we could run off this one to be 13.7. So, <coughs> overall, okay, the superposition uh, current computation that come out is 11 amperes, negative 13.7 degrees. And for the nodal theorem, it was 11 amperes, negative 13.7 amperes. Hallelujah. Okay. We have brought out the value of I sub M, I sub L, which was the same from the previous solution. They are both 11 amperes. Okay. After the round of negative 13.7 degree amperes. Okay. Uh, that's engineering. Okay. Uh, if you are presenting a theorem, you must have to prove that if you try to solve a problem, the solution should be the same for both solutions. And since the outcome was the same, hallelujah for superposition theorem and hallelujah for nodal theorem. Okay, uh, that's it guys. So for those of you who are trying to study electrical engineering or just watching electrical engineering lectures on YouTube, this is for you guys. If you want to subscribe to my channel, my channel is at youtube.com slash at proofdvgillustrious. If you want to share it, click, click, click share. I am telling you this one. Try to watch my long video format discussion on alternating current circuit. I will assure you, you, you will get something from it. Okay, good evening from Los Angeles. Professor David J. Illustrious.